Finerzed DST-201 versus 1963 RCA KCS-136. Yesterday we cleaned out a storage unit and this is one of the sets I brought home. This is black and white RCA. New Vista. Black and white, not color. Black and white. And we're going to review this scope by hopefully starting this up. I don't know if it works or not, and checking the horizontal output. So what does this do? It's three-in-one multifunction integration. Uh, so this has a signal generator output, which is good for tracking audio stuff. I've done, you've shown that on transistor radios before. In, uh, intelligent anti-burning, whatever that means. So 10 megahertz scope, which is fine for most functions on a TV, vertical, horizontal, uh, multimeter, and the signal generator. I don't think we'll really use that on the TV, but we can... So anyway, 1963 KCS 136, and they must have made this chassis for a lot of years. Because if you look at KCS 136 and the SAMs, it goes all the way from 500 up to 700. So they made, they used this chassis for a lot of years in these black and white sets. Here's a look inside. Look at this, what is this? Is that a light pipe? You gotta be kidding. This thing, this big long thing is a light pipe. Wow, that's interesting. The light bulb is right here, and that carries the light up to the front of the set. I believe that's what that's for. Anyway, uh, tuner, chassis. We're going to fire this up. I don't even think I'm going to dim bulb it. We're going to check the voltages there on the horizontal output tube and the scope. With the scope, we'll check the uh, grid so these little bargain, low-cost, all-in-one scope meter things are sort of ideal for maybe someone who's just getting one vintage TV and is sort of, you know, getting into this hobby. Maybe they can't figure out why the horizontal output tube is red plating or the vertical won't work and they need a little scope. Uh, voltmeter. This is not real high tech, not high voltage or anything. Okay, this is the connection for the signal generator. We're not going to use that here. This is the charging cable. This is, these are the meter leads for the meter. This is the scope probe with adjustment calibration screwdriver. I use one of these quite a bit. Give me convenience or give me death. It's not big, it's small, it's kind of all in one. Uh, yes, English. Yes. Okay, so diode. Uh, capacitance. Resistance, DC voltage, that's what we want to start, I think. Now, the area we want to go after here, and we're pretty much just doing a cold startup on this TV and um, testing out this little scope thingy, is we want to go after the horizontal output. So we're interested in pins 2 and 6, they're the same and pin one and seven. Uh, we want to look at that waveform. We should have 130 volts peak to peak. 
at about 15 kilohertz and we should have 130 volts on pin 1 and 7. 1 and 7 are tied together and so are 2, or si and, two and 6 so you can use either one of those. First thing I'm going to do is pull the tube out and stick these little wires down on the side of the pins. Got the two little test wires inserted and the scope hooked up to pin 2. Did you hear that? Boom. No protection, no variac, no nothing. Okay, how do I change the time base on this? Uh, this should be looking at the grid. Okay, I just hit the auto button here. Okay, that looks pretty good. 15.6 kilohertz, that's about right. The signal looks good. 17.78 volts, but I'm on the uh, 10 to 1 probe here, and I have the probe on 10. I don't know if you can see that, but the probe is on 10. So that looks good, because we were supposed to have 180 volts. So it has, it's dim, that's a dim raster. Kind of looks like the CRT is pretty tired. Uh, that's not under normal light. That would be so it's dim. It's it, the camera makes it look a lot brighter than it is. So let's see. Let's go back to this. Uh, so we wanted 130 volts peak to peak, which we're over that according to the thing. But I didn't calibrate it. Uh, let's check the DC voltage. We should have negative 45 on that pin and we should have 130 volts. And actually I'm measuring it after the 47 ohm resistor too. The main thing here is that the waveform is there and it's about the right frequency. And um, it is the peak to peak does seem to be off, but I'm not quite sure I calibrated this or anything. Um, you know, a lot of times you see these posts online where people are like, my tube is red plating and I don't know how to diagnose it. Well, this is sort of where you start, right here. You have a good horizontal drive signal. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, we want volts, DC voltage. And I'm hooked up with a different type of clip lead. I'm using the grabbers, but let's see. So this should start pretty high, which it did. This is the screen. So if the current draw through the tube is excessive, the screen will be high. If plate current is excessive, screen voltage will be high. And the other way around, if, if there's lack of... If I was to disconnect, I could probably show that here. So 132 volts. The schematic calls for 130. So watch what happens. I'm going to pull the damper tube out right here. Watch. Damper tube is out. So see, the screen voltage goes down. It's not getting... The cathode wants electrons. So if the cathode is not getting electrons from the plate, it's going to take them from the screen. 
and vice versa. If the cathode is not getting its fill of electrons from the, the screen, it's going to take them from the plate. So if the plate is excessive, the screen is going to go up. The cathode's getting enough electrons from the plate, it doesn't need them from the screen. I don't know, that's a simplified way to think about it. So on RCA color sets, you can adjust the efficiency coil by measuring the screen voltage and basically dipping the screen voltage because when the screen voltage dips, that means the plate current has also dipped. Okay, now we're gonna measure the grid voltage, the DC voltage. The same pin we looked at with the scope. Now this should be negative. If this is negative, there it goes, it's gonna go negative. That will tell you, there it goes negative. That tells you that there's an AC signal there from the horizontal oscillator. So there's a quick look at low-cost oscilloscope, two of the three functions on a 1963 RCA Blonde. It's a blonde set. So I hooked it up the converter box. Let's watch some TV. Stand by. I got to get off of that because they will. Oh, hearing aids. I don't know what this is, probably because I don't have the appropriate antenna connection. Really? This is a struggle. Okay, that's contrast. That's brightness is all the way up. Horizontal. Tone. What is that? Is that a light pipe or what is that thing? And I don't miss any conversation. And that's what I love about it. Call the number on your screen right now and order your pair of affordable, comfortable, almost invisible recharge. That looks like a light sensor. $99 a pair. And at $99, they make a fantastic gift. So give the priceless gift of hearing to someone you love. Yeah, because when I put my light there, it gets a little... Where's the schematic? There we go. I got the antenna connected properly. It's a little blurry. Yeah, it's more than a little blurry. If somebody hasn't told you this today, please know it, please own it, please embrace it and celebrate it. You are beautiful just the way you are. Oh, yes. Where's the fine tuning? Okay, so you pull this out for fine tuning. Take the stress out of planning this year's celebrations when you stream open invitation. Okay, so that thing with the light pipe must be the light dependent resistor. Right there. So that adjusts the contrast or brightness or both based on the ambient light in the room. So that's a photo cell right there with the light pipe that brings a light to it. Well, that's Clerky Durfler McBoyvy Splizey. So here we'll take a look at the glowage here. The wasted electrons for the elegant look of uh, 
piece. Ooh, Joan Rivers carpet collection. I kind of like this set. I wonder if we'll get a commercial here for Lynn Zest or Sky Rizzi or Rinvoke. I need my Rinvoke. Oh, Trimphia! I love my liver problems and I need a vaccine.